Wings with Wings Productions, with the support of Whimsical Productions and Collected Sounds presents a bonus episode of The Skylark Bell. I'm your host, Melissa Oliveri. In today's episode, we read a bonus chapter called Disappearances, where Magpie, Lucas, the Bunting Brothers, and Sidney Finch sit by the fire and tell tales of the house at Meadow Lane. So get settled in, grab a blanket, a warm drink, and let's get started. I could have sworn it was right here, says Lucas, his finger flipping through the books on the bookshelf. He and Magpie have returned to the library to look for the mysterious book about the Sky Lark Bell, Bell with an E. I'll go ask the librarian. Maybe she can help, says Magpie, walking over to the front desk. She returns a few minutes later, a look of confusion on her face. Oh, what did she say? asks Lucas. She said she's never heard of it. But she checked the system anyway, and the card files just in case. But there's no book with that title, or any variation of that title, in this library replies Magpie. But we both saw it, right here on the shelf, says Lucas. That wasn't the first time I saw it either, says Magpie, surprising herself at the confession. What do you mean? asks Lucas, turning toward her, surprised. I saw it in a dream a few weeks ago, says Magpie, staring at the ground, afraid of Lucas's reaction. That's amazing! What was the dream about? asks Lucas, genuinely interested, and not a hint of disbelief in his voice. Magpie proceeds to tell him about the terrifying dream, leaving nothing out. They sit in silence for a while once she's finished. Hey, I thought I saw you two walking in here, booms a voice nearby, making both Lucas and Magpie jump. Bo Bunting saunters over, completely oblivious to the stern look from the librarian his loud call has earned him. Bo, whispers Lucas, hoping to lead by example. Magpie and I were just doing a bit of research for... for my mom. She's doing a series of paintings based on Pocket, and we thought we'd look into some of its history. Magpie cuts in. Lucas gives her a wink, and she feels a warmth wash through her. Billy and Sidney Finch are at Mirror Pond. They're playing some kind of nerdy nature bingo game or something. I was just about to go join them. Would you like to come? asks Bo. Magpie and Lucas look at each other. There's nothing left for them here in the library. They might as well get out and have some fun. The trio exit the library and walk down the gravel road toward Mirror Pond. As they pass by Meadow Lane, Bo who has been chatting the entire time, becomes unusually quiet. I wonder how old that tree is, says Magpie tentatively, nodding toward the huge oak tree in the front field of Meadow Lane. My guess is it's probably as old as my family's store, says Bo, though he doesn't actually turn to look toward the tree. He opens his mouth as if he's going to say something more, hesitates for a moment, then closes it again. Over here comes a voice a little further ahead. Magpie looks toward the pond and sees Sidney Finch waving her arm at her, the row of colorful bracelets still on her arm. Magpie looks down at her wrist, the turquoise bracelet Sidney gave her still wrapped around it. The sun is just starting to set in the sky as they take a seat on an old log near the pond. We brought everything we need to make some s'mores, says Billy, holding up a bag of marshmallows and a pack of graham crackers. He and Bo get to work starting a campfire, while Lucas and Sidney unpack the ingredients. Magpie wanders toward some nearby bushes to find sticks for them to roast the marshmallows on. In the distance, she can see Meadow Lane. She stops to stare at the house for a moment. Perhaps it's just a trick of the light with the setting sun, but she could have sworn she saw a woman in the upstairs window staring out at her. 
Magpie shudders and hurries up to finish her task before returning to the circle. By now, the campfire is crackling, spreading its warm orange glow all around. Magpie hands out the sticks while Lucas circles around with the bag of marshmallows. Okay, says Billy. Now it's time for spooky stories. Who's going to go first, he says, looking around the circle. I have one. It was told to me by my Tota, says Sydney. And she proceeds to tell the story about a shape-shifting deer woman who lives up in the forest, who lures unsuspecting people into her enchanted realm, and they are never seen or heard from again. Magpie feels a chill go down her spine. For some reason, the story has affected her far more than it should. She feels a strange sense of foreboding. Speaking of people never seen or heard from again, what do you guys know about Marius Corbeau? asks Lucas. Magpie is surprised. Lucas has always seemed so reluctant to discuss Meadow Lane or anything related to it with anyone besides Magpie. Bo bites his lip. My grandpa used to tell us stories, but he was pretty old and probably pretty confused because they didn't make a lot of sense. What I do know is that the story about Marius disappearing is true, and that his horse really was found. In fact, Cormorant lived out the rest of his days on your family farm, Lucas. At this, Lucas's eyes grow wide. I never knew, he says. Billy pipes up. Some say Marius never really existed at all, that he was a ghost the whole time. He just appeared one day and then disappeared just as suddenly. Whatever the case, they say Farfalla was devastated. They say she cursed the house and that's why the silence... Billy catches himself talking about the one thing Magpie has learned no one in town ever talks about. The silence at Meadow Lane. I think it's unfair to blame Farfalla. No one knows what really happened, says Sydney in her calm, comforting tone. I would love to know more about the Skylark Bell, though. Some say it was a gift to Farfalla and that it was very old. They say it had the most beautiful, perfect sound. But it disappeared when her family left Meadow Lane, and no one knows what happened to it. Some say it's a mystical object that could end the silence, says Sydney. Magpie can feel the familiar tingle at the back of her neck that tells her she needs to be paying attention. The mystical Skylark Bell that rings to break the silence. And the book titled The Sky Lark Bell. Sky with an E, Bell with an E. Surely there's some connection between the two. After all, they were both in her dream. Magpie is so lost in her thoughts, she doesn't realize everyone has gotten up and started packing. Magpie, you ready to go? She hears Bo's voice cut through her thoughts and looks up. She sees Lucas standing close to Sydney and feels the same tightness in her stomach she felt the first time she saw them together. Oh, yes, she answers, hoping Bo didn't notice the look on her face a moment ago. I'll help you up, says Lucas, quickly walking over. He holds his hands out and lifts Magpie to her feet. They stand and stare at one another for a moment and Magpie feels the tightness ease up. Sydney, I can drive you home, says Billy. Bo, you want to ride with us? Bo nods, and the group makes their way back to the road. Billy, Bo, and Sydney hop in Billy's pickup truck. He revs the engine, and loud rock music bursts out of the windows. Magpie and Lucas laugh as the truck roars down the road, leaving a trail of gravel dust behind it. Not only do the Bunting brothers know how to make an entrance, they also know how to make an exit laughs Lucas, making Magpie giggle. Lucas walks Magpie across the road to the bottom of her driveway. I hope those spooky stories around the campfire don't give you nightmares, he says, as they're about to part ways. Magpie gets the impression Lucas isn't quite ready to go home yet, but she isn't sure. I think I'll be fine. I'll probably just dream of marshmallows and chocolate, she says, winking at him. Lucas smiles and lingers for a moment before finally wishing her good night 
and heading home. Thank you so much for listening. Before I go, I'd like to thank Fate and Starling Publishing for this fantastically eerie story, and Canel for composing equally fantastic and eerie music for this podcast. If you're enjoying this story, please consider leaving a rating or a review. Either one or both are greatly appreciated. Thank you.